Hello, I'm back and it's great to see you. How are you doing? It's been five months since I last brewed or did a wine test with you. Five months since I've last done anything homebrew related. I've been away lots and lots of countries, overseas, traveling with work, having great adventures and great times in proper, proper heat. Fantastic. But now I'm back and I want to pick up where I left off and I want to do a review of my beetroot wine. That was the last video I made, the last wine I made before my adventures. So I thought it's only fitting. I come back and I give it a taste. I really, really adore beetroot wine. It's so, well, I'll describe it when I pour a glass, but, but the color is brilliant. Deep red, beetroot red, burning. It's a deep beetroot, burning red, and I love it. I normally bottle my beetroot wine in green bottles. It preserves the color better. But as this is a test, but as this is a test batch, and I want to show you off the brilliant colour. It's in a clear bottle for the time being. So, shall we pour ourselves a glass of beetroot wine and enjoy? <coughs> Cheers! Welcome back. As I said before, the colour is rich red, beetroot red, bold, bright, vibrant, and very vivid and luscious. I just love that dark depth of it warming and that replicates itself on the nose as well. It's summerish, it's light, it's bubbly. It's summerish, it's light, it's bubbly on the nose, it excites you. The colour and the aroma hit you boldly on the nose. It has a the beetroot wine has a very earthy undertone to it. It's peaty, it's rich, it's bold, strong. I gave Dee a sample of the beetroot wine earlier and she thought it was cherry wine and you don't understand why. The colour is cherry and there is also that aroma of cherry on the nose. It hits you as sweet cherry. Yet it is complex. It has that cherry undertones to it and also that peaty, earthy, real root veg style depth and character to it which makes it a really, really interesting wine to drink. Anyway. Sipwise, I'll tell you what I think. The first notes that hit you is a cherry pie. It's, it has that sweet, it has that cherry complexity to it. And then on the tongue, it just sits and it's mellow and long and very mature it is. And there's a good amount of aniseed and licorice as well on the back of the tongue. It's very, very, it's a wine that is very, complex. And when you think of the ingredients, it's just plain beetroot. But I can't pick out any beetroot flavour to it. I am shocked. It is poor man's cherry wine. Now that is a wine that can pass off as a cherry wine. It's beetroot, but it's cherry. It's not the first wine I've made that shouldn't be the way it is. It's amazing how you can transform one ingredient into something else. So this is a cherry wine. Have I made a cherry wine? Am, am I confusing myself? Have I made a cherry wine and bottled the wrong one? I don't know. But I would gladly serve this and drink this as a cherry wine. It has that strength of alcohol to it as well that carries that strength of wine forwards. It's not a weak wine, it's strong, it's 15%. If you serve this with a mince pie, people will be well impressed. I'm well impressed. It's far better than any cherry commercial wines out there you buy, or cherry liqueurs. Give me this any day, give me gallons of this any day, and you'd be well away. Awesome. Right, it's great seeing you all again, and you keep up the brewing, and let me know how it goes. And I'll see you with more taste tests and more wine recipes not too far away. Have fun now!